Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with the next video in our circuit analysis lecture series. So previously, we've been looking at how we can analyze AC circuits to figure out what's going on inside of them. But now what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at an application of AC circuits, which is filters. Now, if we just think in a normal sense, not in any sort of circuit, a filter is something that takes you know, an item out of like a compound or a group of items. So if you have, say, water and you run it through a filter, you're going to filter out all the particulates, maybe sand, whatever it is that's going to be in that water that you don't want. Similarly, in circuits, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be filtering things. We're going to be filtering out things that we either don't want or, you know, things we want to get rid of or try and make smaller. Now, typically, the things that we want to get out or make smaller are going to be specific frequencies. Okay, because let me pitch you an example. If I was recording this audio and I had this really, really low frequency hum, so a really low frequency hum doesn't make me look professional, kind of annoying, distracting, I'd want to get rid of that. And the way I could do that is I could say, well, let's let all of these really uh, higher frequencies pass, and then if the frequency is below a certain point, let's attenuate it, let's cut it off. Okay, so that would be called a high pass filter because you're letting higher frequencies pass. Similarly, if I had a high frequency hiss or something in the background, I would say, okay, let's let these lower frequencies pass, and I want to attenuate these higher frequencies that are annoying and that I don't need. That would be a low pass filter because you're passing low frequencies. Okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about today, low pass and high pass filters. We're going to figure out how we make them, how we analyze them, and uh, how we can sort of tune them to our own needs. So I think that's enough intro, so I'll go ahead and get out of your way, and we can move over to the whiteboard. So we're going to be first talking about low pass filters. So we're talking about low pass right now. So low pass filters. So we want uh, lower frequencies to pass through unobstructed, and then we want higher frequencies to be uh, blocked or shorted or whatever it is. You know, we don't want to measure those high frequencies. So I'm just going to show you the first simple architecture. This is going to be a resistor, a capacitor, and then we're measuring across this capacitor. So I'm going to call this V in here, and this is V out, and this is R and C. So this is our RC low pass filter. We, we call it an RC low pass filter because it has that resistor and capacitor in it. So what can we do with this? Well, we want to express V out as a function of V in. So we eventually want to get somewhere we, where we have V out divided by V in. Okay? So, Let's first write out the expression for V out. So V out, just Ohm's law. V out is going to be I times the impedance that we're measuring across, and that's going to be ZC. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what is I? Because, you know, are we going to have some current going here, here, coming in through the source? You know, what is I? Well, the answer is we're going to simplify this a little bit, and we're going to say that there is no current flowing through that measurement. Okay, so there's no current going there. So that's not there, our measurement is going is not going to have any effect on the circuit. So there's only a single current going through the resistor and the capacitor. So we can figure out this current I is equal to Vn divided by Zn. And Zn is just going to be the total impedance that's presented to the input. So that's going to be Zr plus Zc. So now the current is Vn divided by Zr plus Zc. Now if I plug this in for I here, what I will end up getting is V out is equal to Vn times Zc over Zr plus Zc. And remember, I want to have I want to be V out divided by Vn. So what I'll do is I'll say V out divided by Vn is equal to Zc over Zr plus Zc. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a special name. I'm going to call this AV or the voltage gain. So that's going to say, well, we have this input voltage. Clearly, if we increase the input voltage, we're going to increase the output voltage. So we want to know how is the output related to the input. So that's why we do V out divided by V in. Okay. How, so if we multiply the input voltage times AV, then we're going to get the output voltage. So <clears throat> we can plug in what we know for the impedances for a resistor and a capacitor, and that'll give us 1 over J omega C over R plus 1 over J omega C. Now let's multiply the top and bottom by J omega C. Okay. Now if we do that, what we're going to be left with is 1 over 1 plus J omega RC. Now for this first part, or for 
really mainly everything, we're concerned with the magnitude, right? We don't care, you know, if there's a phase shift here because we're just measuring the output. We care about how much that magnitude has changed. So we can look at this magnitude. So the magnitude of AV is just the magnitude of the top divided by the magnitude of the bottom. So that's going to be one. Top's pretty easy. The bottom, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. So this will be one plus omega RC squared. Okay, and that's the square root of that. Because remember, Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So before we move on, we need to talk about where, where are we going to call sort of the cutoff frequency of this filter? Like what are we going to define as, you know, the place where we say this is the cutoff frequency or a filter with a cutoff frequency of x? Where are we going to define the cutoff frequency? Well, kind of logical to say that fc, our cutoff frequency, is the frequency where we cut the power by half, okay? But here we're talking about voltage. We're not talking about power. But in our previous video, we said that, again, power is proportional to voltage squared. So that means voltage is proportional to the square root of power. So if we take pretty much the square root of this whole thing to get voltage, then we will get 1 over square root of 2 times V. Okay. So the cutoff frequency is where our voltage is attenuated by 1 over square root of 2. So that means that we want whatever's here in this radical to be equal to 2. So what I'll do is I'll make this other equation. I'll say 1 plus omega C, because now this is the cutoff frequency we're talking about. And omega C, just to review, is 2 pi times FC. So 1 plus omega C RC squared has to be equal to 2. And you can manipulate this a little bit. And what you'll arrive at is that omega, oh, what you'll arrive at is that omega C is equal to 1 over RC or that FC is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. Okay, so this is the cutoff frequency of this filter. That means that at this point, we are going to have a <clears throat> one half decrease in our output power, okay, or a one over square root of two decrease in our uh, input voltage, okay? So this is what's going to completely define this filter. Okay, we're going to say that this has a cutoff frequency at this point, um, this is a low pass filter, so we're expecting below that cutoff frequency, it's going to pass through unobstructed. And above that, it's going to be attenuated more and more and more. Okay? So again, this is the foundation of the RC low pass filter. Now, <clears throat> this is not the only sort of low pass filter. There are kind of two standard related architectures that I think of. So the first is, again, the resistor and the capacitor that we just looked at. So R, C, and we're measuring across this capacitor. Cutoff frequency, like we just said, is 1 over 2 pi RC. Now, the next architecture is going to be an inductor here and a resistor. And then we're measuring across that resistor. So I'm going to give you the cutoff for this, uh, for this one. So this cutoff is equal to R over 2 pi L. And now let's just talk about these filters. Let's try and understand intuitively what's going on. So if we look at the RC low pass filter. At a really low frequency, let's say zero or at DC, then excuse me, the capacitor is just like an open circuit. So it's like that capacitor isn't even there. Now, if that capacitor isn't there, no current can flow through that resistor. So there's no voltage drop across that resistor. So that means that the output is just going to be equal to the input. Okay, so we have a voltage gain of one. Now, <clears throat> if we have a really high frequency, that capacitor is going to be like a short circuit. So if we have a capacitance that's sort of like, or an impedance presented by that capacitor that's like a short circuit, most of our voltage is going to drop across that resistor. And if most of the voltage drops across the resistor, there's not a lot left for us to measure across that capacitor. So uh, as the frequency gets higher and higher, the voltage we measure is going to get closer and closer to zero. So our voltage gain gets closer and closer to zero. Now, similarly, for the RL circuit, then we'll see sort of a similar thing happening. At a low frequency, that inductor is like a short. So we're going to see all of our voltage across that resistor. And at a high frequency, that inductor is like an open circuit. So we're going to see no voltage across that resistor, okay? Because the resistance is negligible compared to the impedance presented by the inductor. Okay? So this is what's happening in these low pass filters, okay? So you can see that lower frequencies are allowed to pass through to V out, while higher frequencies are attenuated and we don't see them as much at V out. And okay? so now that we've got low pass filters under our belt, let's move into 
the high pass architecture or the high pass configuration. So I'm going to do again an RC circuit. So I'm going to say we have this input goes to a capacitor and the resistor and we're measuring across this resistor. So this is our V in, this is our V out, and we have this R and C. So I'm going to skip a couple of steps a little bit. So what you'll kind of end up getting is V out divided by V in. Remember this is equal to AV. Now this is going to be equal to ZR over ZR plus ZC. Okay, so we just flipped the position of the capacitor and the resistor. So that means we're flipping where uh, in this previous in this previous one where we had a capacitor impedance, we put a resistor impedance, and then we replace the resistor impedance with a capacitor impedance. And that's where we end up here. So now we can plug in the values for the resistor and capacitor impedance. We'll get AV is equal to R over R plus 1 over J omega C. Let's divide both sides by R this time. Okay. So if we divide both sides by R, this is going to give us 1 over 1 plus 1 over J omega RC. So like last time, we're going to take the magnitude. And if we take the magnitude, we're going to again get a 1 on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to get square root of 1 plus 1 over omega RC squared. Okay, so this is the magnitude of our voltage gain. Now once again, our cutoff frequency is going to be the place where we have uh, square root of 2 attenuation in our voltage. So 1 over square root of 2 times our, or, yeah, 1 over square root of 2 times our input voltage. So that means, again, this whole thing here in the radical has to be equal to 2. So if we set this up, we'll get 1 over 1 plus omega RC squared has to be equal to 2. And again, you can work this out for yourself if you want to, but this ends up giving us the same thing, that omega C is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. Oh, sorry. Omega C, we don't have that 2 pi there. 1 over RC. Or FC is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC. So you can see we have the exact same cutoff frequency. The only thing that changed is that we changed uh, the location of the resistor and the capacitor. Okay? So <laughs> that is really a good reason why you should memorize these equations, you know, the cutoff frequencies, because these are multi-purpose equations. They're for low-pass filters, they're for high-pass filters, and so they're very, they're very uh, applicable to these filters. So this is something that we need to know. We need to know these cutoff frequencies. So like before, we have two main architectures. We saw the first already was the capacitor and resistor. Okay. So this is a C and an R. And this one's cutoff frequency is the same as it was before. This was 1 over 2 pi RC. And then we have another configuration, which is a resistor and an inductor. Okay. So this resistor and an inductor, it's going to have the same cutoff frequency. So R over... 2 pi L. So let's think about these intuitively once again. So if we think about these intuitively, the RC at high frequencies, that capacitor is like a short circuit. Okay, so it's just a direct connection to that resistor. So if we have that direct connection to the resistor, there's going to be no voltage drop across the capacitor. All the voltage is dropped across the resistor, so we're going to measure the most voltage possible at higher frequencies. Now at low frequencies, that capacitor is going to block the signal, right? Because the capacitor is going to block DC. You can think of just DC. So if that capacitor is blocking DC, no current is going to flow through the resistor, so we're not going to measure any voltage. Now for the RL, for this RL circuit, at high frequencies, the inductor is sort of like an open circuit, so it's like it's not there. Okay, that means, again, we're just going to measure the same output that we have at the input. And at low frequencies, think DC, the inductor is just a short circuit, so we're not going to measure anything across it. They're, they're going to get total voltage drop across the resistor, no voltage drop across the inductor, so we're going to measure zero. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the two high pass filter configurations. And again, this is just a good, these are, you know, there are different kinds of filters, a whole, I'm sure, books and books full of the different kinds of filters, but these are sort of the basic ones, and these are the ones that you should know, because these, like I said, these are very basic. These could be used very frequently, and this is something where it's just good to know these cutoff frequencies and know how they're applied. 
So we can plot the responses to these circuits a couple of different ways. So if I said I just have a low pass filter, okay, I have a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of FC. Below FC, we're expecting it to have voltage gain of one. So this is AV. Now what's gonna happen at FC is that you're going to see it drop very quickly and then sort of start approaching zero as time goes on because it, you know, a super, super high frequency, we're gonna have like zero volts on the output. But the thing is, whenever we get like over here into this section, it's hard to really tell, you know, is that 0 0.1? Is it 0 0.0001? You know, it's, it's hard to tell. We don't have a whole lot of resolution on those smaller values, okay? So what we can sort of do is we can apply a little bit of a trick here. So what we can do is we can, like I said, apply a trick and we can say, let's not look at this in a linear scale like this. Let's look at it in a logarithmic scale or a log scale. So let's look at it in a log scale. Now to convert to log scale, we are going to do 20 times log base 10, don't use natural log, it's log base 10 of the linear voltage gain. Okay? And we're going to call this AVDB. Okay? And the reason we're calling it AVDB is because the units in log scale is decibels. Okay? So 10 decibels corresponds to a 10 times increase. Minus 10 decibels corresponds to a minus 10 times decrease in power. Okay? Now for voltage, that means that a minus 20 decibel uh, decrease corresponds to a uh, 10 times decrease in voltage, okay? Because again, voltage and power have that square relationship between the two of them. So now if we plot this low pass filter in a log scale, what we're gonna find is that the maximum value is going to be, let me make sure I write AVDB here. This maximum value is going to be zero dB. Okay, and whenever I use little d, big B, that's how you write decibel. Okay, so this is, whenever I use little d, big B, that means decibel, and you should use little d, big B as well. That's just the standard notation for those units. So what we're gonna see is that whenever we get to FC, up until we get to FC, we're going to have just this sort of flat response. No, no real change. And then once we get to FC, it's going to start dropping quite a bit. And this slope that it has is going to be minus 20 dB per decade. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, what's a decade? Well, a decade is just a 10 times increase. Okay, so if I started off at one hertz and wanted to move one decade, then that would be going to 10 hertz. If I was at 10 hertz and wanted to move one decade, that'd be going to 100 hertz. So you can think of it as just adding a zero on the end. Okay, so one to 10 is one decade, one to 100 is two decades, one to 1000 is three decades, okay? So that means that we start off at FC and we're expecting to have zero dB here. We're, you know, ideally, you know, for these graphs, we're expecting it to not have any loss at all. And then we're expecting at 10 times FC, so 10 times our cutoff frequency, that it's going to have minus 20 dB here because we moved one decade and it has that slope of minus 20 dB per decade. So same thing for the high pass filter. What we're gonna have is we're going to have AVDB here. For the high pass filter, until we get to that cutoff frequency, we're going to have that same sort of decrease here. So this is minus 20 dB per decade. And then beyond that point, we're expecting a flat response at zero dB. So that means over here, if I move one decade to the left, so that's going to be one-tenth of FC, we're expecting this to be minus 20 dB. Okay, and this is for voltage again. <clears throat> so what is the, I guess, range of the decibel? Well, for our cases, you know, we said we're working with, we're working with passive filters. That means we're not putting any extra power in from anywhere else. So that means that AV in a linear scale, it's bound between zero and one. Okay, so it can be zero, it can be one, it can be anything in between, okay? But it's bound to that, okay? So if we convert this to a logarithmic scale, then what we'll find is that AV dB, the maximum value that it can be is zero dB, okay? Because log of, <clears throat> log of one is just zero. Now, the minimum value it can be is minus infinity. And that should be just a less than there. 
So the minimum value is minus infinity. So you can see how this gives us a whole lot more resolution here because we go all the way down to minus infinity. Uh, because, you know, here, it, you know, like 10 times FC, we might be all the way down over here. Okay, but now it's very easy to see that over in the decibel scale, we're at minus 20 dBs. Okay? So <clears throat> plotting in the decibel scale gives us a little bit more resolution. And typically, things like filters and stuff like this is plotted in the decibel scale because you get that extra resolution here. Now, it's, the plots aren't going to look exactly like this because you're not going to have just this straight, sharp angle here. But the plots are actually going to look like it's something more like this. You know, you're going to have a gentle sort of curving, and then it'll hit that minus 20 dB per decade. Same thing here. It'll, you know, be this minus 20 dB per decade, and then it'll sort of curve up here. Because remember, at FC, we have a one-half power decrease. That corresponds to a minus 3 dB. Okay, so... Ideally, we would think it's 0 dB, but it's actually minus 3 dB at this cutoff frequency. So you might hear people call it the minus 3 dB point or the 3 dB point. That just means the cutoff frequency, and that's where your power is cut in half, okay? minus 3 dBs. Okay? So, guys, I know this was a little bit confusing because, you know, decibels still is a little bit confusing for me. It's hard to sort of get a grasp of, of but the best way to do this is just to get some exposure to it. Kind of learn it and figure it out, get your hands dirty, and see how decibels corresponds to something in real life. So up next, uh, what we're going to be doing in the next video is we're going to be looking at band pass filters. Right? Because if we want to let just a certain band pass and then uh, attenuate something that's higher than that band or lower than that band, that's something that we can do. And we're also going to be looking at what's called higher order filters. So what happens if we like cascade these two filters in series to get a little bit steeper cutoff, right? Because here we have a minus 20 dB per decade roll off. And now if we needed something that's a little bit steeper, we can make that happen with higher order filters. So that's what we're going to look at next time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I love answering questions. I, you know, the whole reason I'm doing these is to provide you guys knowledge. And if I can sort of help you on your journey of mastering this material, then I am very happy to do so. If you guys like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. You can ring that bell if you want to get notified anytime I post these new videos. Uh, other than that, I'm Aaron Carmen, and thank you for watching.